sit down. Good one. If we delve into a little closer, yesterday while talking about proteins, I have talked about domains, I have talked about active sites, I have talked about the groups, their orientation, their steric hindrance, their spatial arrangement. So whenever there is an active site, basically that active site is getting uncovered by dephosphorylation and it is being covered by phosphorylation. Suppose it is a cup, you put a lid, can you put tea in it? Yes or no? No. So this is phosphorylation, the phosphate group is causing steric hindrance on the active site so that the substrate can bind. But when it gets dephosphorylated, the lid is open. That is how 90% of the phosphorylation dephosphorylation activation works. Why I came to this topic? I came to this topic because it is of cardinal importance. Cardinal importance being the key and the most important regulatory step of glycolysis is. Come on, come on, tell me. Phospho, fructo, ah, my God, God knows how you are going to pass your finals. So, P, F, K is the key regulator of glycolysis. Similarly, in gluconeogenesis, you will find glucose 6 bisphosphatase. You will find a glucose 6 bisphosphatase. Basically, they are the same enzyme. Basically, they are the same enzyme. And they have two active sites. Suppose this is the enzyme, this is the active site for glycolysis, this is the active site of gluconeogenesis and the two processes are being regulated simultaneously. Once your insulin is secreted, as your friend correctly said, with the increase of cyclic AMPs and GMPs, there will be phosphorylation of the active site for glycolysis. And on the same pathway, and on the same pathway, it will cause deactivation of gluconeogenesis. This is called reciprocal enzymatic regulation. This is called reciprocal enzymatic regulation. And this is the best example of your allosteric modulation or allosteric regulation for an enzyme. Be assured, if it does not come into your boards, you will face this same person in your neat PG. You have to. Everybody has. Is it clear? Reciprocal regulation. What are the other two steps for regulation of glycolysis? Anyone? Yes. Very good. Hexokinase. Hexokinase and glucokinase, glucokinase, step 1, step 1 and then finally pyruvate kinase, the last step, these are the three regulatory steps, okay. Now you are also likely to face the question 
about activity of glucokinase or hexokinase where is hexokinase present where is glucokinase present and how they act and interact at different levels for glycolysis okay you know the answer to that all of you know the answer to that the difference between glucokinase and hexokinase thank god so with this we are done with regulation of regulation of your <coughs> glycolysis we are actually running 15 minutes late so i will i have to hurry down a little bit okay so next comes ogtt oral glucose tolerance test oral glucose tolerance test where there is an ogtt there is also an ntt called gtt or glucose tolerance test or gct glucose challenge test there is a very common misconception that is generated with this ogtt is specific for diabetes mellitus detection gct or gtt is done in pregnant females to see whether their glycemic control is altered or not okay what is the procedure of ogtt 75 g of anhydrous glucose i came for ogtt and you immediately gave me 75 mg of anhydrous glucose after an overnight fasting so you will not take a blood sample before that right you will not take a blood sample before that as soon as the patient comes you will feed him you will not take a blood sample first thing blood sample you will not take so where did the step go and 90% of the copies were missing the step this cardinal step first you draw the blood for the patient in fasting condition then you give that poor soul 75 mg of anhydrous glucose and then you collect blood at hour 1 and hour 2 okay so what are the normal levels of estimation in fasting condition in a normal person what levels are you supposed to get 70 to 110 is a uh, is a yeah you can say uh, that's uh, quite true now that is uh, that is for GC, gct that is for oral oral glucose challenge okay so 70 to 100 and 100 you can say safely okay the second step is after giving 75 it will shoot up and it should it can go up to in normal levels how much 140 to 180 140 to 180 in the third step it is supposed to come down again to 120 to 140 okay so it will be a bell shaped curve in glucose intolerant what will you find what will be the difference between a glucose intolerant person and a diabetic person yes in both cases the graph will be shifted upward basically the graph is like this no right in intolerant in intolerant the graph will be shifted upwards but the nature of the graph will not change whereas in a diabetic person the nature of the this curve will change it will go flat 
here after 2 hours where it was supposed to reach 120 to 140 it is reaching 180 190 like that so the curvature is there in diabetics you will find the curvature is lost it is going same 200 or even more than that ok what does it denote any idea what does it denote this is very important what glucose threshold you should not call it glucose the thing is why is this important why are you doing this test you could have done a fasting pp you could have put an ad hoc criteria and you could have been done with it why haven't you any ideas why not glucose will be converted into glucose in diabetes the problem is not glucose utilization the problem lies in glucose absorption then both cases same what is the difference why are you doing this why do you need to differentiate between a glucose intolerant person and a diabetic person why 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 because the mode of therapy will change because the mode of therapy will change in case of a glucose intolerant person rigorous lifestyle modification is often sufficient to reduce the insulin resistance and to pull down that person into a normal level but once the resistance of the receptors have gone so beyond past that the normal curvature and the absorption of glucose is being hampered in that case you have to put him on medication and likely that medication will go on lifelong that is why this is important that is why you need to separate with these two and that is the only reason why i am teaching you this okay whatever is being taught to you has a clinical implication you will face it in some point of your life. You need to comprehend at first why this thing is being taught, why is this useful and then only you will find it interesting and engaging. Otherwise I could have taught you botany only, taxonomy, right. The most common problem that the students of first year face is how this is actually related to medical science in any way. Let me tell you, biochemistry is the most intricately intimate subject which is the basis of pathology, which is the basis of pharmacology and it will form the basic of medicine. If you do not know the procedures, you are going to land in soup. If you do not know the, if you do not know the metabolic pathways, you will not know where the drug is supposed to act. If you do not know where the drug is supposed to act, you will keep on copying other people's prescription and you will lose your own individuality. You will lose to think, this patient, should I give him a sulfonylurea? Should I give him a DPP-4 inhibitor? Should I give him an acarbose inhibitor? Should I give him an SGLT analog? Or should I particularly shift this patient upon insulin therapy? And if you don't know GTT, if you don't know the glucose levels, then you will invariably have no idea. And you will lose your own individuality. That is never permissible in a doctor. Okay? So we are done with GTT. Now what about GCT? Glucose challenge test. Very simple. A pregnant female. Overnight fasting, feeder, not 75 but 50 gram of anhydral glucose after 1 hour, take her blood sample, it is more than 126, she is glucose intolerant. That does not mean you will put that poor lady on oral hypoglycemic agents. Along with OGTT you also have to perform an HB1AC analysis 
and a urine sample analysis. These two will always be followed with the curve. Please remember it is not there in your books. If you have actually bought one, go back home, put a star and write with OGTT samples for HbA1c and routine urine analysis have to be taken. And that is how you do a complete OGTT. So much so about OGTT. What's next on the agenda? Beneficial role of cholesterol. Enemy of the state. Enemy of endocrinologists. Enemy of cardiologists. Cholesterol. Good cholesterol. Bad cholesterol. But cholesterol is only one entity, right? Can you explain? What is good cholesterol and what is bad cholesterol? You will get your chance. Wait. Huh? Speak louder. This is the best platform to give a wrong answer. You will be corrected and it will remain with you lifetime. Better give wrong answers in your group discussions, in your small group sessions, in your theory classes, so that you don't give the same wrong answer in your university examination. Joy all of Cholesterol is of one type. First tell me cholesterol is of one type or there are many types of cholesterol? One type. Then, no, that was not the question. I have not yet delved into the utilities of cholesterol. I am just asking you, you have heard of good cholesterol, you have heard of bad cholesterol. But cholesterol is one and only the same. So how the same cholesterol becomes good in some places and becomes bad in other cases? Come on boys, none of the boys, let, let me see whose hairstyle I like, I like his hairstyle, come on speak, good cholesterol, bad cholesterol, but cholesterol is one, no idea, I am here to give you idea, I am here to give all of you an idea See. See, good cholesterol and bad cholesterol, cholesterol is a single entity, it as a single entity has its own functions. <coughs> the problem is, there is a huge lipid cycle which is going on all over the body. And since cholesterol is hydrophobic or hydrophilic, come on, we do not have all day, cholesterol is hydrophobic or hydrophilic. Hydrophobic, so it cannot just go, go in blood. Can it flow in blood? No. Then how will it flow? Chylomicros, yes, from absorption at one point. Uh, it has always needs to be carried in blood through a carrier system. This carrier system might be LDL, it might be a chylomicron, it can be a Micheli, it can be a HDL. So what happens is, LDL from your intestine carries your entire circulation, cholesterol and it goes on depositing through each and every place so that tissues can utilize that cholesterol. And in case of a dyslipidemic person, this distribution is not up to the mark. What it does is, it dumps the cholesterol on your arteries and causes hardening. So high levels of LDL cholesterol or high levels of LDL in the body is bad cholesterol. It causes atherosclerosis, not arteriosclerosis. Arteriosclerosis is something different. I do not have the time, otherwise I would have rigged that out of you. 
what is the difference between atherosclerosis and arteriosclerosis? Yeah, good one. Uh, I think only three, two to three people who have faced me, my five will know the answer to this. Others do collect that answer. Okay. So that is why if there is a rise of LDL concentration in your blood, most likely your cholesterol is getting deposited in your arteries which is causing atherosclerosis which is for health. That by layman is called as bad cholesterol. So what is good cholesterol? Good cholesterol is HDL. Why? It has a ApoB7 big molecule and it acts as a scavenger. Once it flows through your blood, it will keep on absorbing or reabsorbing the excess cholesterol that is present in your circulating system. So it is scavenging cholesterol from your circulating system and it is reducing atherosclerotic potential. Okay. So this is a very common misnomer. It will be asked, you will be confused. If you have heard this lecture, put it in your head. Cholesterol is not good or bad. It is whether it is in LDL or HDL where the game is. Okay. So now about what are the uses of cholesterol? Commonest one from this bench, one function of cholesterol. Very good. It is present in the cell membrane. It is present in the cell membrane. Okay. It forms the basis of fluidity of the cell membrane. Second bench. One other, one other uses. Steroid hormones. Very good. Third one. Except for steroid hormones and vitamin D. Arachidonic acid pathway. Leukotriene formation. Chemokines. Delta kinds, uh, all of these are precursors of cholesterol. Cyclophenanthrin ring, other functions. What use is that? What what use? Can you use cholesterol for anything else? Very good. Production of bile acids. Okay. Production of bile acids. It's a cholesterol intermediate. Okay. So, if you can remember these five points, it is more than sufficient. So, here we are done with, what was the question? Beneficiary role of cholesterol. Okay. Now, we have galactosemia may lead to cataract. Galactosemia may, may lead to cataract. Okay. So, what is galactosemia? Is there one type of galactosemia or there are multiple types of galactosemia? Come on, come on, come on. Tell me. One type or two type galactosemia? None of you have read polyol, polypol pathway, sorbitrol pathway. No. So there is one galactitol dehydrogenase enzyme and there is one galactokinase enzyme okay okay so there are two enzymes one is classical galactosemia another one the kinase there is one kinase galactosemia both of them are different okay and you find cataract in the second type, that is the galactitol kinase deficiency. You find cataract in that. What kind of a cataract you will find? You will find an oil drop cataract. You will find an oil drop cataract. Now what is happening? Lack of kinase enzyme will do what? Deposition of galactose. There, is, there only comes, no, polyol, polypol pathway. I gave you the hint only. It will cause formation of sorbitrate. Dulcitol and sorbitrate. What is the problem there? It will cause imbibation of water. And it will cause
swelling of the lens capsule. That is the primary action. The secondary action is the lens fibers will be, the lattice will be lost. The lattice will be lost. Why is lens transparent? Why is cornea transparent? Because the lattice is as such, it ensures penetration of ray of light. Okay. When the hydration factor gets disturbed, this will cause imbibation of water and will cause cataract formation. Okay. So, there you have got galactosemia may lead to cataract. Okay. Now, my favorite question, why TCA cycle is an amphibolic pathway? What is the time? Oh, we have Follow, follow. Why TCA cycle is called an amphibolic pathway? Yes, there is catabolic activity also, there is anabolic activity also. So, what is the catabolic step? Pyruvate is not broken down in TCA. Pyruvate is getting acetyl coal, right? Is that TCA cycle? Then, why is TCA cycle amphibolic? Yes, there will be shortening of chain length initially up to alpha keto glutarate. And after that, there will be addition of carbon and there will be increase in chain length. Okay. So, at first, the chain is decreasing in size, then it is increasing in size. That is why it is amphibolic. A sister question to this is, this is also a anaplerotic pathway. This is also a anaplerotic pathway. Why? What else? Anaplerotic pathway means a connecting pathway through the intermediates of TCA cycle. You can reach so many other pathways. Is it not? You have mallet. Mallet formation is there in TCA cycle. Where will that mallet be utilized? Mallet aspartate shuttle. You have succinate. Where will that succinate be utilized? Succinyl coenzyme A plus glycine will form delta ala, beginning of the bilirubin pathway. Yes or no? Yes or no? Succinyl, co succinyl coenzyme A plus Glycine, Q of it. Q. Hemoglobin. Oh, sorry. My bad. I'm going to get moved here. So, that is the starting of your hemoglobin synthesis. So, that is why different intermediates plus you are generating a lot amount of what? Energy equivalence. You are producing energy equivalence or not? How many, how many NADs are being produced? NAD. Look. In one cycle, one acetyl CoA will give how many, how many NAD? Think of the pathway, man. Two NADP, one FADP, one ATP. For one cycle. Right? Two, nine, you are all good. That is ATP calculation. I am not talking about ATP calculation. Okay? So, that is the role of amphibolic pathway, it is also an anapleurotic pathway and ECA cycle. Finally, liver glycogen helps to maintain blood glucose. Where do you have glycogen stores? You have glycogen. You have glycogen. Huh? You have. You don't have glycogen. Think. You have glycogen or not? You have glycogen. Where? Liver. Not liver. 
You have glycogen in kidneys? In liver? Okay. <laughs> okay. So he has glycogen in liver. Where do you have glycogen? Hello, madam. Where do you have glycogen? Anywhere except for liver you have glycogen? Yes. No. Very good. Which one? Very good one. Then? Muscles. Very good. She has glycogen in muscles. Do you have glycogen in heart? You have glycogen in heart? No. Sure. Do you have glycogen in heart? Yes or no? No. Okay. The heart does not metabolize glycogen. Why? Your heart metabolizes glycogen? He doesn't have heart. He lost it to someone. To some poor fellow he lost it. And he is still searching for it. All the best. Be on the hunt. Someday. Anybody likes to listen to music? MLTR? Huh? Michael loves to rock. Pop, pop music. No. Okay. Fine. So why? Why? It is the liver glycogen. Does liver glycogen in, has any role in keeping constant levels of blood sugar? Yes. Okay. How? Glucose level increases. Insulin will act on? Glucose level have increased. Hey, you just said increased. <laughs> glucose level increased or glucose level decreased? Any one of the two. Let's start with one side. Glucose level decreased. What will happen? <coughs> Hepatocytes, glucagon will directly act on hepatocytes. Name the enzyme. Name the enzyme, my friend. Huh? Name the enzyme, not the moiety, enzyme. Glycogen phosphorylase. That will cause a breakdown of glycogen stores in liver to produce glucose to maintain constant levels of blood glucose and that activity is being mediated by glucagon through allosteric modification right what happens when the other way around insulin is getting secreted there there will be activation of glycogen synthase again reciprocal regulation activation of glycogen synthase and deactivation of glycogen phosphorylase is together now you understand how important that thing was the concept which i tried to impart to you okay so here there is reciprocal now my question is very good you also have glycogen in your muscles what about them why why did they not come out to help you you are somewhere near but, but nowhere on the mark yes myophosphorylases and hepatic phosphorylases are different ok so myophosphorylase which are responsible for breakdown of glycogen in muscles is only limited to muscle microenvironment and nothing else they will only store produce glycogen when there is an increase of glucose mo mo molecules once they enter inside the muscle they are in a micro environment otherwise if with increase and decrease of glucose had each and every tissue started to for form and break glycogen can you maintain autonomy can they maintain autonomy no that is why it is only the liver glycogen, glycogen synthase and glycogen phosphorylase which are 
being activated and deactivated by insulin and glucagon. In other places, it is not being activated. It is kind of isozyme. It is a kind of isozyme, isoenzyme. Okay. So we are done with your role of glycogen. How liver glycogen helps to maintain blood glucose levels. And with this, your revision class is officially over. Okay, I just uh, I'll take two to five minutes. Just uh, my experience taking your examination. You can say post mortem. You people are definitely reading, learning, trying your best, but that is a big but. There, out of your friends, few have joined very late, some have joined, joined earlier and others who joined in the scheduled time or more or less. Now, yet with all this, you all had appeared for the examination. That was the greatest, uh, I would say, I would rather uh, thank you or whatever it is. I don't have any adjectives to apply. Because the test examination or whatever was there, whole hundred of you bunked. Please don't bunk. This is one thing and I tell you, few people who joined late yet, they have performed, in my table they have performed well. At least I didn't find anyone uh, telling, uh, uh, I told them to take the hip bone or uh, say tibia, they didn't pick up the fibula. So I think with this you have, at least the panic, at least to some extent you have overcome. And one thing that don't like read multiple books. If you definitely you have the liberty to look into books, you gain knowledge, everything. It is your liberty and you must do it. If you are fit after finishing because most of the uh, books written by our Indian authors are in the same format and naturally don't jumble up. If I come and say I read from read something, I, he is answering well, then don't think in that term. Let think this is the only book you could procure, you could get, go back to 50 years back. When we did not have the options except somometer in our time, part one, then to type cyclotile notes, it's not in a book form. Only abdomen and this thing was there. But with modern days publication, everything, internet, everything is there. You don't serve the phone if you can get a hold of a laptop or a tab, whatever you are comfortable with. And the budget also you have to think. So laptop will be the best to see the net, some, but I think you have only few months left. Your target will be to do the exams well. Act but a target oriented, act but a be focused and don't go searching for things, don't go for scientist's name. Uh, uh, this is uh, uh, <coughs> some um, uh, person's name. Uh, 
don't go for all that. You just say what you have seen the thing. This is the same format will be for all the uh, your parts which are left remaining. Now superior extremity has been started. Now you please get involved. And one thing in histology lab, uh, there is no histology. Santuru sir will teach you, uh, will take the classes on his two days and others will be following through uh, the other parts whichever they are teaching. With this beginning, I, uh, today is a very important, uh, everything is important in medical science. So this is a picture you might be wondering that what is this picture? This is a picture, it's a sculpture. It's a sculpture by an artist and I am presenting you this because with this, for this pic, one picture, I bought a magazine for 500 rupees. Only single picture because really I was amazed and also this will lead you to the embryology of breast. This will lead you <coughs> to the clinical diagnosis of any congenital anomalies or not and also the now you see the breast, multiple breasts, multiple breasts. Now this is the primitive milk line that appears in the embryonic stage and with the growth of the fetus, with the growth of the embryo and then the fetus, things go away or get dissolved and only two breasts are there and when the baby is formed, you are getting male or female, you cannot accept the genital organs. It is the breasts represent equally anatomically in the male and the female as same. Now, now imagine <coughs> your you have read thor thorax. Now you have seen uh, you have seen the intercostal spaces. You have seen the muscles in the um, <coughs> pectoral region. And with this background, now here is the muscle pectoral is major. This is the mammary gland. This is the mammary gland. This is the nipple, this is the areola and this is the axillary tail of Spence, the foramen of Langer, digitations of the serratus anterior muscles and this is the external oblique over rectus sheet. With this, the posterior relation. You just, you see, you feel your own chest wall and you see the muscles are there and intercostal spaces and it extends from second rib to the sixth rib. It is globular, it is in different shapes and sizes and also pendulous. It is a fibro, fibrous tissue, connective tissue and elements and your fat and it is the glandular element is there and <coughs> adult female breast of right side of the mammary bed, this is the mammary bed. Now you have seen the, today you go back in the uh, dead body, we are, we are lucky because I am part of you that we have got a female body. And uh, <coughs> now, <coughs> this is the slide which is showing 
a non pregnant inactive duct system during pregnancy alveoli proliferate at the ends of the ducts and lactating milk secretion and accumulation of alveolar lumen now <coughs> it is a this whole breast is a modified apocrine sweat gland and you, with this the histology you have seen the histological features now with this picture if the histology is taken in this section transverse section longitudinal section imagine the uh, branching and everything accordingly uh, it's a tubular structure naturally with the alveoli and the glands and <coughs> and see these open into the nipple 10 to 20 15 to 20 ducts they open into the nipple now the arterial supply of mammary gland this is the breast or mama, the superior thoracic artery supplies, this is the lateral thoracic artery, the internal thoracic artery gives branches, this is the arterial supply, simple, simple, you just simply draw diagrams, if you have a, a note on uh, your breast, then you just simple draw diagrams, and one thing, there are, uh, when I say you draw diagrams, I just can't remember, in one uh, student, she used lots of color pencils and uh, different shades and this thing. See, shop boy, I'm talking breast, a clavitectoral fascia, a good master book of the magrigars. So, to mother magrigar to pon and pepper name, to mother amade this. Sarah Lika Gachet, our Kichu, our Polygra Lichen, our Kichu student Liche, to Tarakin to shop Magrigar K base for a Liche. To me, JJ make up for a time naked to Amitmuka Barbar Bulchi to Made, Tumra lecture class Jari Ogna, Kane Sono, Poncho Indrio. Our social India that you can develop as you go in your thing. Six cent, develop your six cent, and you will pass through your life. Please don't waste every every minute is valuable. Class as the class of focus. Adda marbe adda the focus. Jamun amar ekta Facebook e dekla, to mathe ekta music concerter moto saal tar mothe ache. হ্যাঁ তার মধ্যে আরো কিছু ছেলে আছে আমি ভাবতেই পারছি না যে তারা এত ভালো বাজায়টা যায় আর কারণ আমি তো অপরচুনিটি হয়নি তোমাদের বাজনা শোনার তো প্লিজ ডোন্ট স্পিক ডোন্ট ডোন্ট গসিপ ইউ গসিপ আফটারওয়ার্ডস নাও দিস ইজ দি ভেনাস ড্রেনেজ দিস দিস ইজ দি ভেনাস now internal thoracic vein this is the axillary vein see the beautiful picture and the posterior intercostal vein azygos vein and the internal venous plexus now one is leading to the other why i'll tell you and breast you will encounter if you see if you are as an mbbs if you see five ladies, at least uh, um, ten ladies, female patients, then at least three will complain of some problem with the breast. Now it is your duty. If you say, she says, my right breast is, I am feeling something. You just tell her to open up. Her totally open up, expose both the breasts. 
ডাক্তারপুর ডান দিকে আছে তুই ব্রা খুলবে না এখানে এখানে শাড়ি পিন খুলতে দেরি হবে ইন্টেনশন you must take care of this ha kule felon don't you have to give some time even if they are female attendant is there and you just take time and tell her to expose and tell her she is feeling it naturally she will show you the place the area the quadrants where the her problem is now if she is a lactating mother then you ask her to press and take out the milk you see the consistency of the milk sometimes a galactosil if uh, forms the cystic thing now the milk is produced and it is it is in thick consistency like kheer or milk made condensed milk i am telling you now why i am telling you this because see if you just go on correlating now arterial supply venous supply then now lymphatics now why i am telling you now <clears throat> the worldwide now breast surgeons are having a different group recently diptendra chhorkar he visited for sasikon or something that he is one of the persons in india is a young guy and uh, promoting this that individual group breast surgeon and even he is trying to do it in uh, even in foreign countries they are doing it in laparoscopy a small tumor laparoscopy you cut off and then take it whatever the way and without damaging the beauty of the breast now you have to have an intention and oh kete dilam memory kore eta gorto kore dilam eta suture mota mota suto diye bede dilam no at the aesthetic appeal thakbe so with this you can see now why i am telling you now if metastasis you will see suddenly one woman come with a fracture and pain acute pain in the vertebra now you if you at the first thing you will first they don't think of cancer first it might be tuberculous spine it can be. and just because tu- tuberculosis is very common in our country think it in that term okay now now this is the part which i will come now automatically now you see that this is the lymphatics from the parenchyma of the breast now this is the apical group of lymph nodes the anterior group the axillary nodes 75% now whenever i told the uh, uh, comes a breast examination you do you tell her to hold it like this so the pectoris major is start actually you slowly tell her first she will point out 
Where is this? You go first, if she complains of the right breast, go to the left breast first. And left breast, no, no, I don't know. But you try to say, no, I don't know. You see and palpate and see if there is any problem. Then you see the apical group, if there are any limb node palpable. You Now, if there is a tumor marks and if there is no limb node, no limb node is a, uh, not uh, correct to speak out. No palpable limb node. You cannot palpate it. Either it can be inflammatory or it can be from malignancy that you can palpate it. But in, usually you can't palpate it. Usually you can't. So, if there is a node, palpable node, then say in this region, we just say, I'm just writing short form, LN, palpable. Palpable. You creep it in your, you draw in your left side of the Prescription, have an image, rough, rough, rough. And at least an average, I've seen whatever question I saw, that you, uh, few are beautiful pictures we have drawn, but you can give a sketch for your own reminder. Because you are busy in a hospital, patient on the table, you operate on the right side, the complaint is on the left side. So you make it a habit. When you go to clinics, your notes, you just go and seeing a patient, you put on this note. It will come reflexly like what I do. Now, this is the, now you see the drainage into the parasternal group 20% and this is the intercostal nodes. Now, intercostal space is this, through this, in the intercostal space. But mostly is this, at least in my uh, more than 30 years practice, 40 years, if I uh, won't say practicing, I have license to practice, but from third year, I have been uh, doing many things. Huh. So, with this experience, I tell you, don't hesitate to examine both the breasts. And definitely touch, touch, touch. And see for yourself, nodes gulo binash. Mane, how the, it is spread. Because your decision will be, hey, husband, operation, no. Things are there. Only radical mastectomy, no. Only lumpectomy. Only that portion of the With modern imaging, you can access to the total image of the breast. Amar Chhatra Jivan, my student age and my practice in the 80s, then slowly, 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 Tremendous means you won't be like for money you don't do it. You just image give because see one cancer patient for your indecision or your wrong decision goes creates blunders. She is in blunder. Nothing can save her. But you can assure her. You can give her a quality like a woman in UK, she wrote a book, How to Live with Breast Cancer. And it's one of the largest selling. She's writing about all this story. What she encountered 
during a treatment. Now, lymphatic from the overlying skin of the primary gland. Now, this is really important. The skin. Now, this portion goes to the infraclavicular nodes and the supraclavicular nodes. Now, if you palpate on the left side or right side in a female, then you look into the breast. And a quick checkup. Patients will say, she is complaining of peptic ulcer syndrome or something. A female. And you find a swelling, neck swelling on the right side or left side. You just, just palpate like this. Just like this. Because I don't feel it. I write a put away. Clinically, you have to do it. And if you see a suspicious swelling, a node, then put a question there and go in a meal with any gastric carcinoma or something, the visual gland, the left side, there might be a gland over here. Even I'm telling you, it can be tuberculosis, it can be cancer. So in between, you have to judge. You are the, you have to be very judgmental. Okay. Now, now this is the parastatal group. This is the axillary nodes. And this is the hepatic nodes. And this is the ovary. Now these are all over here sub, subperitoneal limb nodes. Now, why I am telling you? Now what to order? What should of them? If there are 500 times, uh, 500 uh, types of blood examination and all this. And but initially you have to first you go for a radiology x-ray thorax, radiograph of thorax PA view, go for an ultrasound if you there's a big lump, go for an USG whole abdomen because the metastasis you can be see a nodular deposit in the liver. Okay, now of course the ultrasound uh, sonologist will tell you the, what type uh, of malignancy is there or not, or th these are the categories. And also, then you go for an FNAC and, of course, excisional biopsy for the mass, the breast lump, or the tumor, breast tumor. Now. Now, the first slide which I showed you of that sculpture of that lady crawling. Now, you can see the milk ridge, the mammary streak is here, here, here is the mammary ridge. Memory, memory streaks. <clears throat> now, triple assessment. Clinical, clinical imaging pathology. Now, age, examination, ultrasound, mammography, affinity, and Biopsy. Confident diagnosis in 99% of cases. Triple assessment of breast symptoms. Now, these minor tools are available at both pool. Available at my place, which I could not think. In 1980, my father got ill. I couldn't get my father's blood being examined by biochemistry, 
that is just simple blood sugar urea creatinine i had to run take the sample to bardwan then to there was two pathologists so that was the scenario in 1980 and today scenario is change but don't misuse technology you use technology judiciously put a thinking into it put your heart into it amake bochorer sheshe kham patabe ebong masher sheshe kham patabe ekta city scan korar jonno ha tar jonno ami random likhte laglam mathay matal husband se beta bau ke marche petache diye matha beta ha se beshe bau ke dekhache diye bolte je kato eta photo kore din to photo kore din मन कर now this is a taken from the net actually this is a example of accessory breast tissue in this portion public mammographic views of breast demonstrate asymmetric tissue in the right axilla overlying the pectoralis major muscle this and now corresponding targeted ultrasound of the right axilla shows benign tissue consistent with accessory breast tissue polymastia embryologically this is a result of incomplete regression of the right mammary ridge at the location so you can correlate and <coughs> now you see the beautiful picture now two facial layers are present superficial and deep layers of the superficial fascia deep layer of the superficial fascia and this is the pectoralis major muscle deep fascia is here posterior lamella anterior lamella here this 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 and superficial fascia of camper fascia or superficial fascia of scarpus fascia now the breast is here okay now <coughs> you can see which surround the breast parenchyma the fascia forms septa called cooper's ligament which attach the breast to the skin anteriorly and to the fascia of pectoralis deep fascia posteriorly they also run through the breast providing a supportive framework between the two facial layers if there is malignant tumor which causes infiltration and shortening of the cooper's ligament there will be dimpling of the skin on physical examination b mediolateral oblique mlo mammographic view shows cooper's ligament yellow arrows i'll show you there which attach to the superficial layer of the superficial fascia to the skin also shown is the retromammary subglandular bursa or space white arrow I'll, this now which contains loose connective tissue and additional cooper's ligament that attach the breast to the chest wall now cooper's ligament because as we so open the breast and the lymphatics if there is a puckering or all along the lymphatics a breast with swollen up and also pudy orange the color is like the orange is the lady from darjeeling can tell us give us pure oranges from send us oranges from darjeeling so you see a nagpur it has a difference so one thing i tell you now you can see the descriptive part this is the these these are these are now these are the it is this 
beautiful royalty. These are the Cooper ligaments. And you see the breast here. Now, now this is the picture showing invasive ductal carcinoma in a 45 years old woman with a lump in the left breast for six months. A digital mammography clearly shows an oval shaped relatively well circumcised primary mass. The breast tomosynthesis image provides better depiction of the microlobulated speculated border of the mass. These a finding size to of malignancy. So now your mode of treatment, management, everything. Clinically you have diagnosed, it, it can be diagnosed, it can be diagnosed, this is malignancy. From fibroadenoma or breast mouse with slips in between the fingers. So you can correlate your anatomical knowledge that your venous drainage accompanying the artery, accompanying the lymphatics. This is a common uh, law, common law. Now, now you can see this is a picture of accessory nipple. This is congenital retraction of the, this is good. This is now recent nipple retraction. The slit like a retraction, nipple to dhuke gachi. Now, this is the ectasia of mammary duct fistula and circumstantial at retraction of underlying carcinoma. Arakta ki tumar hatta. Tumi amun babe train kurbe. Your feeling will give major diagnosis. You can feel it. Even if you do a vaginal examination in a lady, uterus, now cervix, you do a speculum examination must and also you feel it and see the consistency, see how it feels because with chronicity, with chronic cervicitis or it becomes hard, it becomes, it might be soft, whatever it is, they feel. Slowly, definitely, when you are doing your uh, wards, you will be coming encountering. But respect your hand, protect your hand. I am going to tell you that I am going to tell you that I am going to I mean, co passenger can request for the Jalate to Bondokura. The way at Tokunto mobile children, don't put it out of Alap Alutonoto. Do came well, ticket the Minilo PNR, Suepolo, Tarate Amor Gath, Pavata, Setami Kurechi. Eh, I got the very gentle Tamra part for it up into Yokoravi, Bubunishan Jetalag of high tech. The Tokun, wait, Deganila, but it had a phone curriculum, Chepegeji, but Om Santi. I was at a Bumigalab. Bumigalab, we passenger K, Kichu, Bapani, Sunlamuna, I'm not a hearing defect. I have autosclerosis, uh, but I, I can't uh, this thing. I, I just switch off my hearing aid and sleep. And once food is in my stomach, Pushare not a thing of Bumija, Tostar Mudde Bumija, our Sharatin Teuti, Chateuti. So, it's a just a purely now this is a bilateral now bilateral accessory breast. Ever this is the breast here, and right breast in a female is always bit big size in a normal. Uh, lady, right breast is a bit big, bigger than the left breast. Okay. Now, the first picture which I showed you, it is this. It it can be concealed. It is a beautiful picture. 
Huh? It can be concealed. But what happens if she is pregnant and uh, the uh, lactating, then sometimes few the lactiferous duct and everything is there, the tissue is, but there is no nipple or it does not excrete actually. It, it is painful, it is painful. So, if a lady complains in the your patient, sir, bacha or potte ke dekchi, ye ekhan ekta swelling hai gaye. Don't think of an abscess first. Of course, you have to think. It, it might be abscess. Now, jaw chilo, temperature chilo. Now, immediately within 10-15 days, postpart, postpartum period, there is uh, temperature rise. Sometimes the malaise. At a uh, CS hole, a condition gulo thake. Kintu, if she points out, then you take a note, examine her. Okay. Now, no, it is not very common. Now, this is the congenital abscess of the right breast. During the development, which I showed you the two embryogenic uh, uh, photos and also the milk ridge or milk line, uh, it can happen. It is not that you will miss. So, this is one. Now, this is the papillum of the nipple. This is uh, R.R. Deshmukh, Dr. M.S. Nagpur. Now, this is the papillum of the nipple. Now, you see, you, she has been carrying it. You will definitely encounter this, even in this time. This nipple is a patient. Now, papilloma, ultrasound, you now. Tarpore, you excise. Excise, send it for histology. Now, <coughs> inflammatory carcinoma of the right breast. You see, now what I want to see is, see this picture, beautifully represented. Now, this breast is definitely, this is normal. Left breast is normal. You can see uh, the anatomy of the breast, the position of the breast, pendulous character. Now, now intramammary breast abscess. This is the breast abscess, which I drawn there. Now. Now, extensive inflammatory abscess. Tuberculosis of the breast is secondary supporting. Now, breast tuberculosis, which is very common. Now, why, why tell you, you, you might not get a picture like this. But if there is some glands, Operating and healing, then it forms a scar, and the skin at a puckering way, it a puckering way, it becomes it pulls inside. You can have it in the neck, even neck region. And when you study the head neck, it will be teaching you and neck glands. It supports and this thing, when it is healing with some anti inflammatory drugs and all this, they go and take it in the uh, quack level or even our, uh, our colleagues, they miss it. 
you give some antibiotic and things, but you bring it into your thought that this can happen and now subareolar abscess in duct ectasia. Now mammillary fistula originating in a chronic subareolar abscess. Now this is an important thing. Now you have to manage this. Now you go do an ultrasound, do whatever it is, uh, investigation I told you. Then you plan your operation. Now in these cases, what you have to do is you excise the, not the whole breast. That is the beauty of the woman. So now bilateral duct ectasia with fistula, with nipple retraction. Now galactosil. The this is the galactosil. It can be like this, this side. Now galactosil has to be managed. If she is lactating, then you have to stop. You ask the um, uh, age of the baby. If it is more than six months or eight months or one year, then some two years. Lady, uh, the baby is two years. They still they suckle. They uh, suckle the milk from the mother. Huh? So you have to give drugs. Plus, very common is that neem leaf paste in the nipple. Tell the mother so the baby gets bitter uh, bitter taste. So she he avoids uh, suckling the mama or breast. And these are phyloid tumor, which is a non-malignant tumor. This is a normal breast. This is a fungating carcinoma. This is a normal breast. And with action, axillary lymph node. Here, here is the axillary lymph node. Here, here, here. See, it can be that big size. Okay. Now, Now this is one thing is that the radical mastectomy was done and lymph node clearance and everything. But after three years after radical mastectomy patients, well, many years after four quarter amputation, no, Dr. R.P. Singh, no. In this case, if it's a sarcoma, naturally amputation was done to get rid of the malignant growth. Now these are different type of processes. Eh? Breast processes after operation. This is a carcinoma of the male breast. It's a male breast. Even a male, a male breast. See, you are in India. So doctor, you can see it. You might have, uh, see it or encounter this type of patient. And advanced carcinoma of the male breast. In this, this is a Royal College London. So, see, up in UK, in London, you are seeing in this condition. So, the carcinoma has no boundaries, no horizon. Now this is a uh, picture from Billy and Love surgery. Now this is another picture painting. I think you can uh, visualize what I am trying to show. Sion, what are you seeing? No, what is it? What is it? No, it is a it's a big photograph depicting what? Ki shab shab da karche? Ar ar ki da karche? Eglu ki eglu ki eglu ki eglu ki eglu ki eglu ki. Thale amar amar lecture ta thi kholo na I didn't convey. <laughs> you 
you people, 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 you